Well, welcome back to another month of Dr. Grabo video. Tonight's Grabo is a Berwick. There's a light here. Get this all. There we go. Berwick Apple Adjustomatic. If you guys are unsure about what an Adjustomatic is, I just heated it up. So it unscrews, and you have a threaded pin in there, filter or stinger, and it screws in like that. It's a tad bit overclocked, but not bad. This is my oldest Graybo. And I think we can all agree that that is an apple. And it's definitely my biggest pipe. <laughs> biggest rainbow. And bigger than I would normally like to smoke. And why do you keep it? Why do you keep it paladin, you ask? The thinness of that stem. I love it. I mean, it is just as good, if not better, than my Medico thinness and stems. Shit, right there. Or right there. Perfect. So, I thought I would just tell you a little bit about the Dr. Graybo Berwick. And then after I read this to you, I'll tell you what's in it. This is from Pipedia. So, the R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company had two other pipe tobaccos, which were George Washington and Carter Hall, uh, that shared a good hunk of the pipe tobacco market left over from the Prince Albert and Sir Walter Raleigh. Thus set the stage for a coupon to be placed. In each package or can of these tobacco products, the pipes presented to the American public were the very finest mass-produced pipes ever created by man, or in all probability, will ever be created by men. Pipes were presented with either a metal filter or a paper filter, like I showed you. The highest quality pipes were presented with only a metal filter. The Westbrook model came either in a rustic or matte finish and had metal filters along with the Berwick that presented the same choice with paper filters. These pipes could be purchased only by mailing five coupons and three dollars to Sparta, North Carolina. So, there you have it. You can read more about it on Pipedia, but I just thought I'd read a little bit. So, R.J. Reynolds, if you guys don't know who R.J. Reynolds is, we're getting some more rain here. He was behind the iconic Prince Albert, Carter Hall, and apparently Sir Walter Raleigh in the beginning. I thought it was always Brown and Williamson, but. And these were only available with mail in coupons and $3 that were in those Sir Walter Raleigh's Carter Hall tobacco in George Washington. Now, I will annotate, because I can't remember off the top of my head, the year, well, let me look in here real quick, uh, that this came out. I believe it was 64. It doesn't say. Oh, here you go. The mail order offer 
began sometimes in the early 50s and would end in 1987 when the R.J. Reynolds uh, company sold its tobacco products to John Middleton. There you go. So started in the 50s. Given, given the size of this pipe, I would probably say that this was probably 60s or later, uh, possibly more like 70s and maybe early, maybe even early 80s. Um, 50s pipes, not always, but tended to be a little smaller uh, than this. So I found this on an eBay find. It was in surprisingly good condition. Um, I still sent it to Briarville for restoration. It had some tooth chatter on the stem, and the stem was really badly overclocked. The thing about these adjustomatic stems was the whole gimmick was, oh, I can just turn it a little more and it'll be fine, because it would kind of eat into the wood, but I, I'll never do that. Um, Uh, but anyway, when I got it, of course I had to put Prince Albert in it. And it wasn't good in it. I, okay, it was Prince Albert. I mean, it wasn't, but Prince Albert in a, in a pipe that wants Prince Albert, it's one of the best smoking experiences you can have. Um, but in a pipe that don't want Prince Albert, it's kind of meh. So then I was like, all right. I knew at that time, because I've had this for a while, I wasn't going to put Carter Hall through it because I didn't like Carter Hall. So then I tried Sir Walter Raleigh. Didn't really do much for me in it. Alone. Then I put Codger Corner in it. Mm-hmm. And it was good. Then, I'd run out of card recorder, and I just had some half and half left in the pouch. Well, I said that really country, in a pouch, and I put half and half through it. And the heavens opened up, and the Lord smiled on me and said, that is what that pipe will be. So it's a half and half pipe. That's what I smoke in it. And that's what's in it tonight. Big shocker for a lot of you, I know. But I don't reach for this one as often simply because of its size. It's just a pretty meaty pipe. I'll show you again. I'm not trying to put my fingers behind it. It's two and a quarter. Um, it's pretty, pretty thick. Got good, good side walls there. You know. Um, but yeah, it is. It is one of my favorite pipes because of the stem. Um, I've said this before. A stem, a good stem, can make or break a pipe for you, man. Um, you know, you just, it just fits. I don't know. It's like a glove. All right. That does it for me. The Dr. Graybo Berwick. You guys can find one. Or the Westbrooks. Pick one up. They were special. They weren't offered all the time. So. All right. With that, I'm going to enjoy the rest of my half and half. And I will see you guys on the next video very shortly. Take care, guys.